guys. So, today, we're gonna talk about measurement. Okay? So, lecture 2. Seeing the universe through physics. So, ano yung mga yung mga concepts that we, that we will cover today? So, first, we will discuss the role of measurement to physics or to science in general. Ano, ano ba yung importance niya? And then, uh, we will differentiate fundamental and derived quantities. We'll talk about dimensions and we will use dimensional analysis to tell whether an equation is correctly written or not. And then, we will uh, discuss the process of measurements and expressing uncertainty in measurements. Uh, and then accuracy and precision, then we'll differentiate random error from systematic error. And then uh, we'll also discuss this one, significant figures and scientific notation. Uh, and lastly, conversion of units. So try nating mag-solve ng problems regarding uh, conversion of units. Okay? Okay, so first is this one, role of measurements in understanding the universe. Uh, pero before before pala muna itong role of measurements na to, tingnan muna natin uh, yung role ng senses natin in in describing the universe, in understanding the universe. Na uh, try nating i-describe yung 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 surroundings natin no? using our senses through these quantities, mass, length and time. Okay? So tingnan natin kung kaya ba nating mag-estimate kung hanggang saan yung kaya nating i-estimate using our senses. Okay? So for mass uh, what is the what is the lightest thing that you can estimate estimate using your using your hands? Uh, titimbangin mo yung isang bagay using your hand, yung pinakamagaan. Ang naisip ko kasi is probably a, a, a grain of sand, I think. Lightest object that we can estimate using our using our senses, using our hands, ano? Probably in the order of grams, siguro or milligrams. Uh, and then, what would be the upper limit? The heaviest thing that we can estimate using our sense, using our sense of touch. Probably a sack of rice, ano? I'm not sure if you will agree to that. Pero kasi, naisip ko, i, uh, anything beyond that, let's say, a sack of rice could be around 100 kg, 80 to 100 kg, ano? Beyond that, I don't think kaya pa nating i-estimate yun kasi masyado nang mabigat. Ha? Okay? Pero the upper limit would be in the orders of kilogram. Siyempre, pag thousands of kilogram na yan, eh, hindi mo na sobrang bigat na noon. No? Hindi mo na masasabi if, if an object is uh, 100, in, in the range of 100 kilograms or 1,000 kilograms kasi hindi mo na siya magagalaw. Sobrang bigat na. No? So, tingin ko ito lang yung kaya nating ma-estimate using our senses. Probably in the orders of kilogram, hundreds of kilograms. How about length? Ano yung smallest, smallest thing that we can estimate? No? Okay? So, I think So I think uh, the diameter of a hair strand in the order of millimeter, probably a fraction of a millimeter. Ano? Smaller than that, uh, medyo hindi na siguro natin kaya ng estimate yun. Kasi masyado nang maliit for our eyes to see. Uh, how about the longest distance that we can estimate? No? Probably a few kilometer. Okay, distance of a few kilometer. Kasi there is this research, ano? Merong research na sabi doon, uh, kaya lang natin makita yung light, uh, uh, lighted candle. Uh, let's say for example, if you are standing at the at a higher ground ano, in, in, a, in a clear night, kaya mong makita yung lighted can, candle at a distance of 3 to 4 kilo, kilometers. Okay? So siguro yun lang yung pinaka limit natin on how on pag nag-estimate tayo ng, ng distance around 3 to 4 kilometers beyond that, siguro 5-7 kilometers hindi na natin hindi na natin siguro kaya makita yun sobrang layo na ano? so, kilometers for time naman, ano ba yung fastest thing that we can think of? Uh, heartbeat siguro heartbeat nyo pag nakikita nyo si crush <laughs> or a blink of an eyelid again, I think it's the fast it's, it's faster than a heartbeat ano? blink of an eyelid fraction of a second uh, how about the upper limit for time? The, the longest uh, time that we can estimate. Meron uling experiments dyan na kinanda. No? Parang group of people nilagay doon sa isang room. Tapos walang, I mean, close yung windows and your, yung doors. Huh? Uh, doon lang sila, parang Pinoy Big Brother. Ano? Binibigyan na lang ng food. 
uh, syempre, hindi wala kang access sa outside world, hindi mo kita if it is sunset or, or sunrise, or day or night, walang orasan sa loob. Ano? And then from that experiment, it, it, was, it was concluded na kaya nilang ma-estimate ma yung time up to 3 months. Beyond that, 4 months, 5 months, hindi na. Akalain na nila, 5, uh, 4 months pa lang sila nandun, akalain na nila, uh, years na yung, year na yung lumipas. Or 5 months, 6 months, akala nila, years na yung lumipas. Pero hanggang sa hanggang 3 months, tama pa sila. 1 month has passed, 2 months have passed, 3 months have passed, tama pa yung estimation nila doon. Pero beyond that, beyond 3 months, uh, na mamali na. Okay, so that's that's our upper limit for time, 3 months. Okay, so uh, ang tawag dito class is the middle dimension. It describes the limitation of our senses. So, ibig sabihin, yung reality natin becomes limited to this uh, to these things, to this to this range, ayun, to this range. Hanggang iyan lang yung pwede nating makita. Okay? Uh, smaller than a grain of sun, medyo hindi na. Ano? Uh, can we see ano, uh, microscopic bacteria? Siyempre, hindi. Ano? Uh, masyado nang maliit yun. Okay, so uh, again, uh, using our senses, using the using our senses, sobrang limited kasi eh. So, hindi natin kayang ma-describe yung physical universe. Imagine yan lang yung range na kaya natin. From grain of sand hanggang sa sack of rice na kilogram na massa, diameter of hair strand, and then distance of few, few kilometers. Ah, uh, Sa time naman, blink of an eyelid, and then 3 months. Yun lang yung kaya nating ma-estimate using our senses. Beyond that, eh, hindi na hindi na uubra yung senses natin because of the limitations. Okay? Uh, what's the consequence of that? Reality becomes limited to our daily experiences. So, parang nakakulong lang tayo dun sa range ng kaya, ng kaya nating i-perceive using our senses. Okay ba yan? So, uh, i-compare natin yan if we use uh, measuring devices, mathematical and scientific skills. From, from that small range of our senses, kaya ba niyang mapa, mapalawak yung spectrum na yun? Okay, so we'll see. So, ganun pa din, mass, length, and time yung quantities natin. Uh, using measuring devices, uh, scientific and mathematical skills, uh, we were able to figure out the mass of electron. Okay. So smallest thing that we can that we can I mean lightest thing that we can think of uh, that we can measure using our using our uh, devices and and knowledge you know ay mass of electrons siguro may mas maliit pa sa mass of electrons probably in quantum mechanics ano pero yan diyan muna tayo yan yung pinaka familiar kasi tayo eh. okay so mass of electrons uh. well the heaviest known thing ano is the mass of the universe itself syempre can we can we estimate that? Yes, using using mathematical and scientific skills. Okay? So alamin mo lang muna kung kung uh, kung ano ba yung composition ng ng stars kasi na, parang I think 99% sa sa universe natin are are stars eh, ano? Uh, ano ba yung pinaka composition niya? Hydrogen helium, ano ba yung volume niya? Ano ba yung density niya? And then from that from that ideas, from that scientific concept ideas pwede mo nang ma-measure yung mass ng universe. Okay? By estimation lang, ha? estimation. Hindi ko naman sinabing exact measure. Eh. Okay? So, for length, uh, ano yung smallest thing that we can measure using our devices? Ano? Uh, probably the diameter of the nucleus. Okay? So, uh, ano ba yung recorded na diameter ng nucleus? I think it's around 10 to the, 10 to the minus... 15 or ranges from 10 to the minus 13 to 10 to the minus 15 meters ano double check nyo na lang okay so uh, how about the upper limit what is the uh, largest thing that we can measure that we can estimate of course the diameter of the known universe in light years okay uh, for time naman what is the fastest uh, thing that we can measure so, yung revolution ng electrons around the nucleus. Yun muna dun, tayo mas familiar. Eh. Revolution, we, we know that electrons revolve around the nucleus. Ano? So, gano'n yung, gano kabilis yung, revolu, yung period of revolution niya? Around, uh, I, I think, in, in the order of nanoseconds, ano? or uh, 10 to the minus 9 hanggang 10 to the minus 15 
I think. And the upper limit, ano yung yung uh, longest time that we know? Of course, the age of the universe. Okay? So, it is, it is, it is uh, accepted that the universe began uh, 13.7 billion years ago. Okay? So, 13.7 billion years. Yun yung, yun yung kaya nating ma-estimate through measurements. So, these are the dimensions which our universe operates. So, imagine, ano, sobrang layo dito sa, sa, sa kaya nating ma-estimate using our senses. Okay, so, ang point ko lang naman dito, class, is that uh, the universe operates in, in, in a very large, in a very large scale beyond our imagination. No? Compare nyo naman yan sa, sa senses natin, which is very limited to what it can perceive. The point is, by using measuring devices with mathematical and scientific skills, scientists were able to get a complete picture of our universe, a complete picture of reality. Okay? Okay, so, uh, additional, ano, what are the things that our senses cannot perceive? Madami eh. For example, magnetism. Okay, can we detect magnetism using our senses? I don't think so. Uh, magnetic fields. Although there are animals that, that can detect magnetic fields, ano, ginagamit nga yan for, for migration eh. Birds, for example, migratory birds, dolphins, and not sure, bats, kasama ba? Whales, ayan. They are using the magnetic field of the earth to navigate throughout, throughout the planet. No? Uh, pero humans, I don't think we can detect magnetic fields. No? Uh, radiation. Radiation, below rende na ba violet? Kaya ba nating ma-detect ma yan using our eyes? So, I don't think so. No? Yung, yung, yung eyes natin can, can only see a very small, a very tiny uh, window doon sa, sa electromagnetic spectrum. Okay? Ang kaya lang natin makita is the white light. Okay? So, yung Roy G. Bib na tinatawag. Uh, red to violet. Beyond that, uh, below red and above violet, wala na. Ano. For example, itong cut na ito, ano, in, in, in an infrared device. So, ibig sabihin, kung, ma, kung kaya mong makakita ng, kung, kung you, if your eyes are capable of seeing infrared, then then uh, in, in a clear night, ito yung pwede mo makita. Ganito yung structure ng cut sa infrared ano kung kaya ba ng kung kaya ng ice mo no? pero syempre we're not capable of that so ang nakikita natin ay usual na na na, na picture ano above violet can we can we ano can we see ultraviolet na ah, hindi din di ba uh, can we can we detect can we see x-rays pag nagpapa-x-ray ba kayo nakikita nyo ba yung 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 flash of light or uh, ano pa ba yung x-ray gamma rays ayun pa gamma rays can we can we detect that so hindi ano do naman sa 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 kabilang side ng spectrum doon sa below red kaya ba nating ma makita yung yung microwave for example yung radio waves so hindi eh our eyes are very limited to to white light right so from red to violet lang talaga. Radioactivity, can we can we detect radioactivity? Can we detect radioactive materials? So hindi din ano, hindi kaya ng senses natin yan. Okay? So yung sa Chernobyl nga eh, di ba? Yung accident sa Chernobyl in 1986, uh, lots of people died eh, kasi hindi na, wala silang wala silang kakayanan to detect whether may mga radiation na ba diyan, mga alpha particles and beta beta rays ano. Hindi nila kayang ma-detect yun ng senses nila. That's why they died during that time. Okay? So, what's this? Ah, ito ay sa... Sa ano? Uh, magnetic field of the Earth. How birds use the, the magnetic field of the Earth for navigation. Okay, so, uh, how about this one? Fundamental and derived quantities. Pag sinabi mong fundamental quantities, ito yung base quantities. Dito, dito na derive dito na derive lahat ng ng quantities under derived quantities kaya nga sinabing derived quantities eh, because these quantities are derived from fundamentals paano nangyari yun? No? for example uh, area was derived from the from the quantities of length ay no length times length um, length to the power of 2 pala 
okay volume must also derive from the quantity of length oh. length to power of 3 okay so density was derived from mass and length to the power of 3 velocity was derived from uh, length over time okay so nakikita why derived quantities are called derived quantities because they were derived from fundamental quantities okay so acceleration is uh, velocity over over time yeah velocity over time to power of 2 dapat eh, meter per second squared so acceleration was derived from length over and time to the power of 2 force ganun din it was derived from uh, from mass ito kilogram and then uh, length meter and then time second to the power of 2 okay so the point is derived quantities were derived from fundamental quantities okay uh, how about dimensions how about dimensions pag sinabi mong dimensions uh, it is it describes the nature of a quantity for example uh, distance uh, distance has the dimensions of length okay Speed has a dimension of length and time. Kasi ang speed ay meter per second, eh, di ba? Length of, uh, a distance over time and distance ay length. Eh. So, time, time naman talaga yan. Force naman ay, uh, it has dimensions of mass, length, and time. Kaya nasabi ko kanina sa previous slide. Eh. So, ibig sabihin, ang, ang, ang force, okay, ang nature niya, makikita mo dun sa mga dimensions involving it. Eh. Okay? So, ang force may dimension ng mass, length, and time. Acceleration may dimensions siya ng length and time to the power of 2. So, these dimensions will describe the nature of these quantities. Okay? Kasi, yun yung, yun yung mga dimensions involved in this, in these quantities. Okay? Uh, dimensions can be treated like algebraic quantities that is fundamental operations can be applied to the dimensions to check whether an equation is dimensionally correct or not so paano ito uh, let's take let's take this for an example uh, the distance covered by an accelerating body is given by uh, s s for ano ha for symbol for distance or displacement ha? Uh, distance or displacement is equal to 1 half 80 squared. Ito yung equation mo in solving the distance. So, dimensionally correct ba itong equation na ito? I will see. Okay, so the equation above is dimensionally correct. Since t squared will be cancelled out, making the length L as the only remaining dimension. This makes sense since the dimensions for distance S is length L. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, itong t, t to the power of 2 will be cancelled out by this t. Eh, kasi naman, naka-fraction to, eh, naka to eh, no? L over time to the power of 2 multiplied by time to the power of 2 over 1. Diba? Usually, ganun yun sa algebra. So, t squared, the point is, t squared will be cancelled out. Ang matitira na lang is length. Okay? Uh, which makes sense. Ibig sabihin lang noon, yung unit na length ang hinahanap mo. Another example, the acceleration due to force. So, yung, yung, yung equation mo for acceleration is, is A is equal to F over M or force divided by mass. Dimensionally, this is correct. Bakit? Kasi, acceleration is length over time to the power of 2. And yung force over M, yung force mo is uh, mass, length, and time. Kasi, syempre, kilogram meter per second squared. Eh, no? Divide by M, itong M na ito. Dimension, mass dimensions of uh, mass yan sa baba. So, cancel yung mass. Cancel yung mass. Matitira mo na lang is length over time to the power of 2, which makes sense again kasi yun nga yung hinahanap mo na unit eh, doon sa right side of the equation. Okay? Uh, equation is dimensionally correct since the dimension of mass will be cancelled out making L over T squared is equal to L over T squared. Oh, the point is, dimensions on the right side of the equation must be the same as the dimension on the left side of the equation. Okay? But the point is, dimensions on the right side of the equation must be the same as the dimension on the left side. Okay? So, uh, if you have length over time squared on the left side of the equation, on the right side, you must also have length over time to the power of 2. 
Okay, so in analogy, if you have apples on the right side of the equation, you should have also apples on the other side. Okay, you cannot have apples on the right side and oranges on the other side. So, hindi pwede yun. It's, it's non-negotiable in physics. Kung ano yung dimensions mo sa kabilang side, yun din dapat yung dimensions na may iiwan sa kabilang side of the equation. Okay? Kasi hindi yan. Okay, so measurements. Uh, simplest definition would be this. Process of finding out how many times a unit is contained in a given quantity. So, dalawa yung keywords natin. You have unit and a quantity. Pag sinabi mong unit, edi yun yung mga kilogram, meter, seconds, Ano? And quantities naman are the mass, length, and mass, length, and time, and other, and other uh, quantities, both fundamental and derived. Okay, so measurement class, unlike counting, is an inexact process. Okay, uh, if I want to know how many letters is contained in this, uh, in this slide, then I could get an exact number. Ano? Pero if I measure the perimeter of this slide, eh, I, I, I will not get an exact uh, value for that. Uh, ano? Pag measurement kasi, it's always inexact. Paano nangyari yun? Kasi naman, yung measurements class ay highly dependent doon sa gradation lines, doon sa mark, sa markings ng measuring devices mo. For example, yung sa ruler mo, ano? Di ba may mga marks doon na vertical lines? So, measurement depends on, on those, uh, those vertical lines. Ano? So, walang problema kapag yung edge ng measure mo, for example, in length, ano, yung edge ng measure mo falls doon sa line mismo. Okay? Then, somehow, you can get uh, a very pre a very precise uh, value. Pero what if yung, yung edge ng measure mo falls between the gradation lines? O, paano gagawin mo? Edi, edi mag-estimate. Estimation. Gasyum ka. Okay? Uh, Doon papatak yung uncertainties. Right? Pag, pag, yung, pag yung measurements mo, pag yung mini-measure mo, nag-fall doon sa in-between gradation lines or in-between markings. Okay? So, doon, doon papatak yung, yung uncertainty na tinatawag. Okay? So, since meron siyang, uh, since it is an inexact process, then it's very important to express uncertainty when, it, when making measurements. Okay? So, paano ba mag-express ng uncertainties and measurement? Let's say you are measuring the length of a pencil using a ruler with centimeter and millimeter vertical marks. The smallest scale division is 1 millimeter. Uh, yung smallest scale division sa isang ruler class, sa 12 inch, inches na ruler, ay millimeter. Sobrang liliit na lines doon. Ano? And then, let's say you are measuring, a, measuring the length of a pencil using a ruler. Okay, so paano mo gagawin yun? Paano mo i-express yung uncertainty? Now, the rule is simple. Uh, uncertainty is equal to the smallest scale division divided by 2. Uh, the smallest scale divided by 2. So, sa ruler class, the smallest scale is 1 millimeter. So, 1 millimeter divided by 2, edi 0.5 millimeter. And then you convert that into uh, centimeter. So, 0.5 mm to cm is equal to 0, uh, 0 0.05 cm. So, iyon yung magiging level of uncertainty mo. 0 0.05 cm. Okay? So, let's say, for example, that you measure this pencil and you, and you, fig, and you found out that uh, it is around 8 cm. Then, expressing uncertainty means writing it to be 8 cm plus or minus 0 0.05 cm. Okay? So again, paano ko na solve yung paano ko paano ko nag-come up doon sa 0.05 cm, yung smallest scale divided by 2 and then you convert that into centimeter. Bakit mo kailangan i-convert into centimeter? Kasi yun yung gagamitin mong unit, eh. hindi mo naman gagamitin yung millimeter. Eh. So, if you want to get the length of the pencil in centimeter, so kailangan yung uncertainty yung uncertain yung level of uncertain uncertainty mo is also in the in the unit of centimeter. So kailangan i-convert mo pa siya. Okay? So smallest scale division divided by 2 is 0.5 mm converted into centimeter 0 0.05. So that will be your level of uncertainty. So ang measurement mo ngayon is 8 cm plus or minus 0 0.05 cm. Big sabihin, uh, 
Ibig sabihin, yung real value o yung exact value ng measure ng ng length ng pencil na yan falls falls between 7.95 cm up to 8.05 cm okay okay so accuracy and precision uh, when you when you say accuracy this is the closeness of measured value to the real value uh, yung real value na tinutukoy dito class ay para siyang ano para siyang empirical value parang iyon yung totoong value ng measurement mo. Pero dahil nga inexact yung process of measurement, hindi mo talaga siya makukuha. Pero alam mo na nag exist siya. Okay? I ang tawag doon is real value, value or exact value. Right? Uh, Siyempre, the closer you are to the exact value, the, the more accurate your measurements are. Okay? Pag sinabi mo naman precision, ito yung closeness of measured value to each other. Sa precision naman class, parang ang, ang gusto mong mangyari dito para para maging precise yung measurement mo, you are trying to repeat the the measurements procedure at least 3 or 3 to 5 and then you get the average tapos iyon yung magiging value ng measurement mo. Later on may example naman diyan ano. Uh, kapag yo kapag inulit-ulit mo yung measurements and the measurements you've made are are close to each other. Okay? Halimbawa, nakatatlong ulit ka ng pag-measure and then halos very close naman yun to each other. Then, dun mo masasabi na yung measurement mo are highly precise. Okay? So, the difference between accuracy and precision can be best explained using this diagram. Yung dartboard na ito. Diagram ano? A, B, C, or D. So, on 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 dartboard A, on, on, on this part, sa letter A, high accuracy and high precision. Dito class in assume na yung na yung yung real value mo is the is the center or the middle of the dartboard. Okay? So ang real value mo nasaan? Nandoon sa pinaka gitna ng nandoon sa may bullseye kumbaga. So for letter A, high accuracy and high precision. High high accuracy kasi naman uh, na, na na hit mo yung target ano yung yung bullseye yung pinaka gitna ano nandoon kasi yung exact value ano high precision naman in a sense na yung mga trials mo in measurements is very close to each other like this in letter A right the real value ang real value mo kasi is nasa gitna eh, no? uh, high precision naman in a sense na yung yung results ng trials mo in in measurements ay close enough to each other magkakatabi okay ba yan on letter C naman <coughs> high accuracy and low precision high accuracy in a sense na nandun sa, sa gitna Pero low precisions kasi hindi pa din naman siya, uh, they are not close enough to each other. Okay? Uh, in terms of value, pwedeng medyo magkakalayo ng kaunti yung value. Pero yung average niya is somehow close to the real value or exact value. Ganyan lang naman yun. And of course, itong letter D, low, low accuracy and low precision. Well, let's have a concrete example. <coughs> Okay, na sabi ko kanina, repeating measurements three times then getting their average will increase the preci will increase the pre precision and accuracy. Uh, say for instance, you gather these values in centimeter and let's say that the real value is 5 centimeter. So meron kang tatlong trial sa una sa letter A na to, sa letter A mer meron kang tatlong trial and then ang nakuha mong value ay 4, 5 and 6. Pero ang iyong real value is 5. Pag inaverage mo yan, 5 pa din. So itong letter A na to ay uh, highly accurate but not very precise. Highly accurate in a sense na na, na, na hit niya yung na yung real value na 5 cm pero yung yung closeness ng bawat value to each other ay medyo malayo. Ano? Hindi naman uh, yes, medyo malayo. 4, 5 and 6. Okay? Uh for letter B naman, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7 yung sets of measurements na nakuha niya through three trials. Ano? Tapos nung in-average niya, ang average is 5.6. Ito naman, shows na highly precise kasi very close to each other yung mga values. Kaso mo, yung, yung average niya is 5.6, eh ang real value is 5. So hindi pa din siya ganun ka-accurate. However, it is precise but not accurate. No? And yung letter C naman, accurate, both accurate and precise. Since yung yung bawat trial niya, same yung nakukuha niya, edi very precise yun. Tapos na-hit niya yung average is 5, same with the exact value, then average, uh, accurate na din. Accurate and precise. Okay, so how about this one? Random and systematic errors. Uh, uh, 
Okay, so all experimental uncertainty is due to either random error or systematic error. In 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 the process of measurements class, in the process of measurements, uh, given na yon. Kung baga it's it, it's part of it's part of the process. Okay, errors are part of the process of measurements. Hindi mo naman magawala ma, ma, yun eh, kasi nga unang una yung unang una sa sa device na gagamitin mo nakadepende yung measurement mo sa precision ng device eh, di ba? Eh, hindi naman eh, eh, impossible din naman makuha mo yung 100% precision in measurement kasi nga nakadepende ka sa markings ng mga measuring devices, okay? So, as long as the process of measurement is inexact, lagi yang may errors na tinatawag. Okay? So, so errors are part of measurements. So, hindi mo pwedeng ma, mata, ma, matanggal yun the measurements. Although, pwede mo, pwede mo siyang mapa-minimize. Pwede mo ma-minimize yung error. Pero, removing it 100% from the process of measurement, medyo, medyo malabo yan. Okay? So, uh, errors are divided into two. It's random errors and systematic errors. Okay? Random errors are statistical fluctuations, changes in measured data due to the precision limitations of measuring devices. Okay? So, yung random errors daw, they are dependent on the measuring device, kung gaano ka-precise yung measuring device. So, mas precise yung measuring device, edi eh mas mas uh, minimal yung magiging random errors mo. Okay? Kapag naman yung measuring device devices mo ay hindi ganun ka-precise, eh edi medyo medyo uh, malaki yung errors na pwede mo makuha from that measurement. So, systematic errors naman, by contrast, are the re reproducible inaccuracies that are consistent in the same direction. Systematic errors are open often due to problem which persists throughout the entire experiment. Pag sinabi mo class na systematic errors, ito yung errors na brought by the devices itself. Halimbawa, kapag yung device mo are, are, devices mo are not calibrated well, Kapag may kapag defective yung device mo kapag hindi siya nakaset sa tamang uh, calibration then doon doon magmumula yung mga systematic errors. Uh, o oh, oh, you look on this figure A to to see the difference between random and systematic error. So for random errors since siya ay highly dependent sa precision, pwede mong pwede mong somehow pwede mong makuha yung pwede mong makuha yung ano at oh, you look on figure A to to see the difference between random and systematic error. So for for random errors, ah uh, nakita itong dotted lines. So ito yung true value halimbawa ano. So for random errors, ah uh, pwede mo pwede mo pa ding makuha yung real value. Okay? Provided na yung na yung device mo ay 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 very precise. Okay? Pero when it comes to systematic errors uh, at yung device mo ay defective or hindi calibrated or may sira then hindi mo na kaagad makukuha yung real value mo kaya naman yung mga values under systematic errors ay malayo dun sa real value okay okay so uh, ito namang figure B parang, parang it explains lang the difference between random error and systematic error in terms of uh, study size. Okay, may epekto ba yung study size sa, sa random and systematic error? Based from this graph, may epekto lang yung study size doon sa random error. Okay? Halimbawa, uh, halimbawa, I want to know the, the average height of the students. Kanyo, average height nyo sa, sa classroom, ano? kung kayo ay 60 students, paano makukuha yung average height nyo? Okay? So, pwede akong uh, gumamit lang ng 10 students and from that, kunin ko na yung, pwede ko nang i-conclude na iyon yung average height nyo by just using 10 out of 60 students. So, pag ginawa ko yon, hindi ganun ka-precise yung average na makukuha ko. Okay? Uh, compare kung lalakihan ko pa yung study size ko. Instead of using 10 students, pwede akong gumamit ng 25 students or 30 students kalahati ng class ninyo para makuha ko yung yung average yung average uh, height nyo by doing that mas precise yung makukuha ko okay so ibig sabihin yung yung uh, yung random errors can be minimized by increasing the study size pero yung systematic error kahit increase mo pa nang increase yung study size niyan kahit pa kahit pa kunin ko kunin ko 
kahit pa ang kunin kong height ay 40 students out of 50 provided na na yung palang gagamitin ko eh, let's say ang ginamit ko ay medida ano, tape measure, eh medyo stretch na pala siya sa kagagamit no? uh, hindi pa din accurate yung makukuha kong average okay ba yan no? medyo malayo pa din kasi, kasi nga again yung systematic error ay nakadepende sa uh, sa measuring device kung defective ba siya kung sira ba siya kung hindi ba siya calibrated okay ba yan random versus systematic error okay so next is this uh, rules of significant figures ah. at ah, pasadahan na lang natin ang isa no na discuss nyo naman na ito before okay so what are the rules of, of significant figures ah? Uh, all the first one all non zero numbers are significant although zero numbers din naman ay significant depende sa case to case basis din okay pero first rule natin is that all non zero numbers are significant so 1 2 3 has three significance figure sf means significant figures zeros between two non zero digits are significant so yung mga trap zero yung tawag na mga zero that are trap between non zero digits are significant. So, 101 is 3 significant figures. Leading zeros are not significant. So, uh, in this in this ano, in this example, point, 0 0.001 has only one significant figures. Okay? Uh, yung 0, yung 0 na to, placeholder placeholder lang yan. Okay? Uh, parang parang it just describe the, the decimal place. Pero still, hindi pa din siya significant. Alright? Trailing zeros to the right of the decimal are significant. So, as long as merong, merong decimal point, yung zeros after decimal point are significant figures. Okay? So, in 1.00, there are three significant figures. Why is that? Or later, I will explain sa next slide. O, trailing zeros in a whole number with the decimal shown are significant. Kagaya nitong example, 100 tapos mayroong decimal na shown. Ano? 100 tapos may point, then 3 significant figures yun. Okay, so later on I will explain why. Uh, trailing zeros in a, in a whole number with no decimal shown are not significant. So, itong 100 na to, without point, without a decimal point, ano, yung dalawang zero niya ay, ay are, are not significant. No? Okay, so um, ambiguous zeros lang yung tawag dyan, no? but they are not significant. One significant figures. Mamaya, ay, uh, check natin sa next slide. May example kasi dyan. Alright, so scientific notation. No? A way of expressing real numbers that are too large or too small to be conveniently written in decimal form. Okay, so a scientific notation is written in this form. M times 10 raised to the n wherein m is, is, is our coefficient n is the n naman is the exponent okay so why is 700 written as 7 times 10 to the power of 2 in scientific notation uh, kasi naman pag kinumbert mo yung 700 sa scientific notation you should, well yan talaga yung magiging sagot mo no? 7 times 10 to the 2 paano nangyari yun just so we just so we understand ano? Uh, yung 10 to the power of 2 kasi is 10 multiplied by itself syempre, ano? so 10 times 10 is 100 so pag ginawa mo yun uh, 10 raised to the 2 is 100 then 7 times 10 is 700 ok ba yan? so 700 is written as 7 times 10 to the 2 parehos lang sila both 700 and 7 times 10 to the 2 has the same value just shown in different ways ok uh, significant figures in scientific notation uh, simple lang naman yung rule, ano? The rule is this. When you convert numbers from standard form to scientific notation, the number of significant figures must not be changed. Halimbawa, uh, 0.00000622, pag kinonvert mo yun into scientific notation, then that would be 6.22 times 10 raised to the 6. Three significant figures sa standard form, dapat yung scientific notation mo, three significant figures. Then, then gaya nito. Okay? So, parehas dapat silang 3 significant figures. Okay. So, significant figures and measurement. Itong 3.00 cm na to has 3 significant figures. Uh, why is that? Uh, kasi naman, itong dalawang zero na ito ay significant in a sense na it describes that the measurement you made was very precise. 
Okay ba yun? This indicates that the measurement made was certain up to two decimal places. Ibig sabihin, class, nung nag-conduct ka ng measurement at nakakuha ka ng value na 3 cm, very precise yung device mo na very na sure ka na wala nang susunod na numbers after 3. Na hindi siya 3.1, 3.12, 3.11. Instead, it is 3.00. Okay? Parang kumbaga significant siya in a sense na na it describes the the precision of, of your measurement. Okay? So, uh, another, yung 3, 3.0, 3.00, 3.000, numerically, they are the same value. Parehas lang yan na 3. Kaso mo, yung 3.000 shows that it was measured using more precise measuring device. Ayun, sobrang certain ka up to up to 3 decimal places. Okay? So, ibig kong, ang, ang point lang yan, class, yung mga 0 after decimal point, parang it it just describe the precision of the measurement made. Okay? A conversion of units. Let's have a quick review on conversion factor. Uh, para lang marimayin kayo doon sa discussion nyo before, I'm sure na-discuss nyo naman na ito before, uh, conversion of units. Uh, uh, so, natin itong problem. How many square centimeter are there in one square meter? Uh, alam natin that one meter is equal to 100 centimeter. Okay, so the first thing that you must do is to write the given. So, ang given natin is 1 square meter. Okay, and then the conversion factor. Multiply by our conversion factor. Uh, the thing is this. Yung conversion factor, pag nilagay mo dito sa loob ng parenthesis natin, kung ano yung unit ng given mo, yun din dapat yung unit ng denominator mo sa conversion factor. Okay? So, kung ito ay meter squared, kung ito ay naka-meter, so dapat meter din yung nasa ilalim, which is 1 meter. And then sa taas yung 100 centimeter. Okay? Uh, but since naka-square itong meter na to, edi kailangan natin siyang apply na square. Okay? So, ano na ang mangyari ngayon? So, 1 meter squared, multiplied by uh, 100 centimeter uh, squared will be 10 to the 4 multi, uh, 10 to the 4 centimeter squared divided by 1 meter squared. Okay? Uh, so, pag ginawa mo yan, pansan yung meter squared, uh, 1 times 10 to the 4 divided by 1 maybe 10 to the 4. So, we have 10 to the 4 centimeter squared. Kasi yun na lang yung maiiwan na unit na siya. Okay, so uh, how about this one? Uh, what is the difference between 10 to the 5, 10 in 5, and 1 in 5? It's a calculator problem. Uh, medyo nalilito yung students when it comes to this. Ano ba pinag pinagkaiba ito? 10 to the 5, 10 to the 5, 10 in 5, and 1 in 5. So, pag sinabi mong 10 raised to the fifth, ibig sabihin lang yan, which is, alam nyo naman na yun, uh, 10 multiply by itself 5 times. Okay? So, pag sinabi mo naman 10 in 5, it means 10 times 10 to the fifth. Okay, and when you say 1 in 5, it means 1 times 10 to the fifth. Okay, ba So, 10 to the fifth is 10 multiplied by itself 5 times, that's around 100,000. While uh, 10 in 5 means 10 with 5 zeros. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. So, 1 million. While uh, 1 in 5, which is 1 times 10 to the 5, to the 5th, hindi sabihin lang yan, 1 with 5 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 100. Okay ba yan? So, uh, wag mo dito ha. Wag mo dito sa, sa powers of 10, sa 10 raised to any number, at saka dun sa scientific notation. Okay? Kapag sinabi mo yung scientific notation class, yung format niya na, let's say, uh, 10 times 10 to the fifth. Pag, pag in-enter mo yan sa calculator, wag niyong, wag niyong ilalagay, wag niyong i-replace yung 10, tapos times 10, tapos i-multiply mo nga into 10, tapos exponent 5. So, hindi 
ka na na, huwag niyong, huwag niyong i-refresh sa calculator ng 10 times 10. So, hindi ganun. Uh, sa calculator, pag gumamit kayo ng calculator na cash ano, nakalagay naman doon sa may ilalim yung EXP. Okay, nakalagay yun doon EXP. So, pag sinabi mong 10 times 10 to the brief, ilalagay mo lang 10, then press mo yung EXP, and then press mo yung 5. Okay? So, hindi mo talaga siya ipipress na 10, tapos times 10. So, hindi mo lang. 10 times 10 to the brief, sa calculator, it should be 10 EXP 5. Okay, so, stay Okay, so, uh, 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 reminders, ha? Uh, a number without a unit is meaningless. Uh, in all your cal calculations, in written works, dapat laging may unit yung inyong final answer. Otherwise, magiging mali yun. Nope. Uh, no unit, wrong unit, wrong yun. Mali. Okay, so, walang points. So, a number without a unit is meaningless. I want you to remember that. And beside, uh, I want you to remember this also, that every time you forget units, a physics theory dies. So, please do not be cruel with the physics theories. They are very, very gentle creatures. So, always include your, your uh, unit in calculations. Okay? Metric system or SI units will be used throughout the calculations in this subject. So, we will only be dealing with metric system or the system international. Okay? We will never use the English system of measurements, ha? Kasi, wala na namang gumagamit nun eh. Alam niya, class, throughout the world, in educational system, in, 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 in research, ang ginagamit na talaga is the system international or the MKS system of measurement. Meet AS, uh, meter, kilogram, seconds. Okay? We will never use the the English system of measurements, yung mga yard, feet, inches, pound. We will never use that. Uh, oh, oh, you look on this. Oh. Nabalitaan nyo ba ito? When NASA lost spacecraft due to a metric math mistake, yung uh, Mars Climate Orbit Orbiter. Okay, so it, 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 it burned and exploded. Bakit? Kasi yung software niya was designed to process uh, metric system. MKS system ano pero ang 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 na-feed sa kanyang information ay naka-English system naman so nagkaroon ngayon ng discrepancies doon sa pat sa pat niya kaya medyo bumababa yata siya ng kaunti doon sa atmosphere ng Mars so na sunog siya upon entry parang parang re-entry tuloy yung nangyari ano di ba pag pag nagkakaroon ng re-entry yung mga spacecraft na susunog sa atmosphere so parang ganoon yung nangyari sa kanya just because of a mistake in 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 using uh, metric system and English system. Okay? So, so that's the idea. Okay, so ito yung sinasabi ko. Mga prefixes lang ang gagamitin natin. <coughs> if you can memorize this, then please do so. Katulong sa inyo yan sa makatulong sa inyo yan sa ano nyo, sa engineering courses nyo Sunday. Okay, so uh, that's it and uh, see you next video.